Okay, so that brings us to the uh, example space in the notes. Okay, then let's uh, let's have a go at this first example problem. Okay, and um, because it's the first one, uh, I'll introduce it at some uh, considerable length. Um, I said before that the first thing that you uh, must do when you come to a, a problem uh, of fluid flow with friction is to decide whether you're dealing with a uh, laminar or a turbulent uh, situation because the laminar relationships that we've just uh, obtained, the formulae for pressure drop and flow rate and so on, only apply to the laminar flow case. Uh, it's simply pointless applying them to uh, turbulent flow. Um, most of these uh, questions uh, will involve, first of all, establishing what the Reynolds number of the flow is, because that's how we decide uh, if the flow is laminar or turbulent. There are a number, of, perhaps, of, of different ways of expressing um, what we want here. In this particular question, uh, the question states, uh, the critical Reynolds number is 2300. And it says, if the critical Reynolds number is 2300, show that the critical velocity is not exceeded. Now, I haven't actually used the terms critical value or critical velocity, uh, but just by way of explanation then, the critical velocity of flow is simply that velocity at which the uh, critical Reynolds number is reached. Okay? Um, so, what we need to uh, do is, first of all, use the given information to calculate the Reynolds number and show that it is less than 2300. To begin the problem, notice that you're given the mass flow rate, but if you glance at the equations that we need to use, the Reynolds number equation and the uh, pressure drop equation, uh, and indeed the power equation, you'll see that we first of all need to figure out the flow velocity and the volumetric flows. <laughs> okay, moving swiftly on then. We've only got a few minutes now to run through this. Is that big enough for everybody at the back to read okay? Okay, silence gives assent. Okay, so first part of the uh, problem, in order to calculate Reynolds number, we need the fluid velocity. I'm going to go through this quickly, just point out the, the salient numbers. So uh, if you make a quick note of the velocity, you can always come back and reconstruct that uh, for yourselves. When we have the velocity, then we can just plug that into the Reynolds number equation. Uh, you need to just, in passing, recognize which of the uh, different flavors of viscosity you're given. Um, in the question, the units of viscosity are given as uh, pascal seconds, uh, which proves, if you like, that it's the dynamic viscosity, so it's mu. Uh, okay, so plugging the... Uh, the fluid velocity into the Reynolds number, we get a Reynolds number of 269.6, and that is about an order of magnitude less than the critical value, so we can very definitely say that the flow is laminar. Real problems, incidentally, tend to, uh, tend to fall into two categories, those which are very definitely laminar and those that are very definitely turbulent. It's very uncommon to find one that is arguable. Okay, next part of the uh, problem then. Next part of the problem, um, find the pressure drop. So we need the volume flow rate uh, in order to do this. 
volume flow rate, mass flow rate divided by the density, or you could just take the, um, the calculated velocity and multiply it by the flow area, whichever you choose. And then we use the given equation for pressure drop in laminar flow, that well-known phrase or saying, 8 mu L V dot over pi R to the fourth. Notice that it's R to the fourth, radius to the fourth. Okay? Um, an unusual way of um, dealing with pipe flow problems. We tend to be kind of um, excessively practical and uh, insist on working with diameters usually. Uh, this, is a, this is an exception. Anyway, again, cutting to the chase, um, the pressure drop predicted by this formula, 4.925 bar. From which, plugging the pressure drop and the volume flow rate into the power equation, bottom line, 1.48 kilowatt or 1478 watts are required to sustain this flow rate of fluid under the given conditions. Okay, so I hope nothing mysterious about that. Um, to begin with, as always, you will need to refer to the set of equations that summarize the um, the outcome of the analysis. After a little while, you should find that uh, you can select the appropriate equations a little more readily. Okay, that's all, folks. Any quick questions? I'll be glad to try the field. Otherwise, we're done.